according to the current legal framework, market participants themselves have the ability to decide whether or not a new exchange should be established. The CVM shall, of course, consider if the regulatory requirements have been satisfied to provide these services. However, once these requirements are fulfilled, the CVM already has the ability to provide the necessary operating permits. Instruction 461, enacted in 2007, addresses issues relating to competition in detail. On the occasion of issuing this instruction, the CVM explained in detail in the notice of public hearing that preceded it that it clearly decided upon the prohibition of market fragmentation at the intermediary level, prohibiting situations that could lead to the internalization of orders or the formation of dark pools, but also expressly decided to not prohibit the possibility of fragmentation at the exchange level. Regarding clearinghouses, CMN Resolution 2882 and BCB Circulars 3057 set the requirements and regulation for clearing and settlement of securities. This means the, the, the Brazilian Central Bank is the regulatory authority responsible for approving the systems of the CCP, deemed to be systematically important to the Brazilian payment system. For depositories, laws 6385 and 6404 and instructions 89, 115, and 124 set authorization requirements for securities, custodians, depositories, even getting into details about interoperability between depositories. Although several of these rules are being modernized, the current framework already provides for the ability for depositories to coexist. In the current technological environment, interoperability between depositories is a challenge that has already been solved by other global operators in regard to best practices, technical protocols, software and software technologies that can be introduced into Brazil. The reason we are going over these points is to reinforce that all of the necessary regulation already is in place and can still regulate the existence of two vertical stock exchanges and post-trade services or one vertically integrated exchange and a competitor that provides the exchange and post-trade services separately with clearing, settlement, and depository functions run as separate businesses. Our research indicates that no new instruction by the CVM or resolution by the Brazilian Central Bank needs to be put out for competition to exist. As Oxera points out in their study, this is somewhat different from the situation in other countries such as Australia, where a number of important changes had to be implemented before competition could, could exist. This is not the case here in Brazil. Forgive me for going over for what mo most Brazilians probably uh, know well, but we thought it would be important to lay out the foundations for what we believe is an important step in the direction of reintroducing viable competition into the Brazilian markets. We also mention this because Oxera's rep report indicates new regulations must be enacted before the entry of new competitors. This misconception has serious implications for the conclusion of the report because based on this false premise, Oxera found that because of the time spent in developing this new regulation, nothing can be done right now except the imposition of something they called price self-monitoring. Therefore, it is not under discussion if there is a regulatory ability for competition to exist. This has already been decided long ago. The question now is whether and in what form the market wants it and this can only be verified by the very process of competition itself. The next point we'd like to address, which has a, a direct impact on the final conclusion of the report, refers, refers to the function of the Central Securities Depository in Brazil. By stating that the primary function of the CSD in Brazil is to ensure that the number of shares held by investors matches the total number of shares issued, Oxera clearly mixes the functions of the CSD with the functions of the registrar which ultimately leads to the conclusion that competition between CSDs could not reasonably be implemented. The model of competition between central depositories that was analyzed in the report proposes a situation where the new central depository would be dependent on and import shadow securities from the incumbent CSD. That is not necessary in Brazil. In Brazil, as responsibility and function of matching the number of total shares is taken by the registrar, the new CSD would simply need to have an account with the registrar. Having multiple central depositories with a single registrar per security in Brazil is not a new or novel idea. It has precedent and is even regulated by instruction 124. Because of this misconception, 
the report fails to examine in depth the situation of competition between two complete vertical service offerings integrating the trading platform, the clearinghouse, and the central depository, which, in our opinion, is the best alternative with significant pricing efficiencies to the Brazilian market. The third point we'd like to address regards the parameters used for comparison. Although the report has raised interesting information about exchange markets in several other countries, it fails to analyze <clears throat> the market with the most similarities to the Brazilian market, namely India. India is also an emerging country with significant geographical size and, of course, also works with the concept of the final beneficiary, which is important but obviously not unique to the Brazilian market. Additionally, India's concepts of clearing and central depository are also very similar in Brazil. India is a, is a country with a strong competitive environment and two major exchanges which, like the BMNF of Vespa, are integrated into vertical service offerings, each one with trading, clearing, settlement, and depository services competing with each other. Accordingly, India should naturally be one of the first choices to be used as a benchmark in this study. It would also be a more equitable comparison between the fees charged for such exchanges and the Bavespa and for the empirical verification of these effects of competition between clearinghouses and central depositories. However, surprisingly for us, the country was not even mentioned in the report in any detail. In our research, we found that competition between exchanges in India has led them to charge substantially lower fees than the BMNF Bavespa, including in the post-trading services believed to be because of a direct result of competition. The Indian markets also have close to 20 million accounts at the final beneficiary level, compared to 600,000 uh, in, in Brazil. Also, no custody fixed fees are charged at the depository level in India. Third, the client is only charged fees when adding or removing shares from their account. Interoperability between depositories has worked for years now in India and has incentivized both central depositories to come up with innovative services and reduce fees for the market. Finally, we believe the Indian market is probably the best proxy for the Brazilian cash equities market, not only because it is a part of the BRICS countries, but especially because the regulators also require trading, clearing, settlement, and depository down to the beneficiary level. The fact that the, fact the peers in the group presented by Oxera which are not required to control trades to the final beneficiary level, complicated the cost-benefit analysis as a, complex as a complex methodology had to be implemented to estimate the cost of post-trade, assuming what clients pay for custody for their omnibus accounts. <coughs> a final point we'd like to address is that the report makes a statement that a significant portion of the increased cost of regulation would arise from the fact that competition between exchanges would necessarily entail the assumption of the functions of the BSM by the CVM. The Brazilian regulation, however, provides that each exchange should maintain its own uh, self-regulatory organization department to be funded by the ex exchange themselves. This is similar to the U.S. and Europe. Regarding this point about the additional cost of regulation, the report also fails to mention the recognized benefits that competition brings to the effectiveness of regulation itself. Among these benefits, we can mention the gains in terms of security and stability to the market during periods when one of the trading system fails, in which case the other trading system can ensure the continuation of trading. The same applies to competition between CCPs and depositories with the additional advantage of segregating the risks of the market into two different environments. In conclusion, we have to say the following. The Brazilian cash equities market has grown to a level where we believe a new exchange entrant can generate significant efficiencies and bring innovations to help make the markets better. Our belief is that the creation of a new exchange with trading, clearing, settlement, and depository services is not only feasible, but will generate the most benefits to the market. This is what we have seen in markets like India, which unfortunately was not included in the report. Finally, Brazil already has the regulatory framework necessary for the entry of new infrastructure, for pro infrastructure providers for trading, clearing, settlement, and depository services. However, rules and regulations are dynamic and evolve, 
and some regulatory enhancements could be addressed by the regulators and the market in the near future. We anticipate material market-driven or regulatory-driven discussions on topics such as detailing best execution duties, fair access from competing market centers to the respective services and products, and finally, modernizing intraday and end-of-day auction rules. Thank you very much once again for the opportunity to provide our views on the evolving Brazilian market. We certainly look forward to comments and further discussions on these topics. Thanks.